Thank you, everybody. That was amazing. All right. So we are going to go into our amazing art shares. I'm so excited to share them with you. Um, throughout our two days together, we're going to feature our art shares. These are five minute interdisciplinary snapshots of the diverse artists who would have been in our Fury Factory 2020 cohort. So we just couldn't let them go. And we figured out a way to kind of have them share a postcard of what it is they're doing. Each company will present sneak peeks of their present and future projects and their vision for the future of ensemble theater making. Plus, through our long-term partnership with LMDA, as we remarked before, we coined the term microturgy, a rapid, tiny new model of dramaturgical collaboration. So um, one microturg was matched with each artist and company acting as a listening ear or a fly on the wall or even a collaborative thought partner. And um, each art share will include a word cloud that's inspired by their engagement with the artist. So look for them throughout the weekend. We're going to do our first art share right now. And I'm so, so honored and excited uh, to uh, introduce first Lucretia Berry of Berry and Company, um, who is uh, going to talk to us or bring us uh, some moment of Tubman or talk about where they are right now. Then we're gonna have Tamiki Salinas from the Bellwether Project and Company. And that's gonna be amazing, followed by Dialect and the Museum of Dead Words. And I, I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much. Let's see some art shares. Build it. Okay, I need my video maybe, or do, are you? I can't start my video. Okay. You'll be good. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. My name is Lucretia Berry, aka Berry, from Berry and Company. And I was booked to do Tubman, which is a reimagining of a Harriet Tubman's life as a young girl growing up in Harlem in present day in 2020. So I'm going to do a snippet of the show, the very opening of the show. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what the future looks like for Berry and Company and for Tubman and the works that follow. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. And uh, here we go. Blackwater River. 1820 kingship decree, life as we know it would be forever changed. Crevices laden with the Shanti, Ghana raised Harriet T. Harriet's first deliverer, her mama, a G. Spitting rebellious rhetoric, she inherited this autonomy. Harriet, be like. A brick, they said. To the head, they said. I don't pay them no mind. Heavy ain't my cup of tea anyway. Unconscious, dizzy, nearly dead possibly, but I ain't stressed though, cause death ain't got nothing on Minty. You see, this freedom baby been growing strong in me since infancy, Merlin County line crippling, drowning, Queendom too big for this Morse-coated body, neurons running north from this oppressive heat, this tongue, this speech, too liberty for these worker bees. Visions, faint sleep, but God holds the nightcap. I just peep vividly, talking to me, telling me to head to Philly, to rescue family, a, a fugitive, they said, with a bounty on my head, you might win some, but you just lost one. It was more like a thousand. A scout, a spy, Union Army, oh glory, my story. I was used to my hands dirty. I was throwing logs until my knuckles bleed. I, I can't shake these dreams, urgent, urgently. 
September 17th, 1849, my brothers brought me back, but I never looked back. I was forward to the next morning. Promised land, heavenly. I couldn't tell nobody, but there was gold all through the trees, all black, everything. Freedom over everything. If you could just see what I saw, you would be singing too. There was such a glory over everything. Freedom over, freedom over, freedom over everything. Liberty's the melody. Freedom over, freedom over. yeah. Freedom over everything. Liberty's the melody. Off from slavery, black girl magic, no mystery. Bricks to the head, straight visions be. Put me in a field and I'm all asleep. Up in my consciousness, seeing God and happiness. These chains ain't meant for me. No master slave, no nigga, I be. Queen Harriet, with these stars I got, don't you ever forget. Pass in the south to the north, 19 times I went back and forth to save my family. My brothers tried to discourage me, but Mama Rich lives inside of me. Mama Rich lives inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. Liberty's the melody, oh. All right. So that was the very beginning of Tubman, the very opening of the show. And uh, I would finish the song, but you know, we have a short amount of time. So you see that, a little bit of that. Um, I think for me, uh, growing into the new year, I'm working on young adult work, young adult novel work. And I'm doing a couple of workshops and applying for grants to do this work virtually. Um, that's what's coming up next for me. And I think the future of ensemble theater is us finding hybrid ways to communicate the work that we are creating. In parks, parks are places of resistance um, and community spaces that um, we can design with our people in mind. And I just think that the people that are thriving during this global pandemic should be the ones also <laughs> providing the funding. And if not, and if not, us just creating something out of nothing. Um, and so that's basically what I'm doing with the work that I'm creating. And I'm very thankful to be here. And I missed coming to San Francisco because it was my one place to, I had on my list to perform, but I'm grateful to be here and to be accepted and to be honored by all of you that are here today. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Reese Zidi, and I'm your host of Dr. Reese Zidi's Pageant for a Better Future. Tune in each week as we seek to find the woman who will lead us into the future. We're not like those pageants of yesteryear. It's 2079. We are beyond the objectification of women. This is a sisterhood. We will be challenging the women on intelligence, wit, talents, chatting, health, and mothering. Let's meet this week's contestants. Rustin, Renner, Padel, Sephia, Rayuna, Deffy, Tesha. What is that I hear? Is what I hear a twist? Ha <laughs> ha, why, yes it is. Tune in for a surprise contestant who will without a doubt steal your hearts. Check out Dr. Reese Zidi's pageant for a better future. See who will be chosen to lead us into a new dawn. Some bubbles I'll pop. I like the hash to the 
like the summertime what does it take to make you mine Bellwether Project, what do you think should and or could be the future of ensemble theater? Go! Equitable. Mm -hmm. uh, decolonizing um, sort of like power structures of the theater. Mm -hmm. Creating a fun, messy space uh, where we can all be together. <laughs> Anti-hierarchical, breaking down hierarchy only, uh, whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Different voices it's from different people, cool. writing, creating, acting, all these different things. <laughs> um, uh, fighting against erased history and unearthing untold stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lauren, did you have something? Instinctual. Mm -hmm. uh, re re redoing the classics. Uh-huh, yeah, but, but making it modern and like a, a sense of history and no, together. No, no things. <laughs> Anti-dogmatic. Um, uh, uh, everywhere. <laughs> time. Having a good time. <laughs> Game of Gators and Paper Saviors, SJ Dubs, Amateur Debaters, everybody who wants liberty desperately but ain't trying to see it contextually, especially me. 
Most of us are the hero of our own tale. The road is tough, we face enemies and prevail. The conversation is competition, we don't bother with details. Those are for the jesters that are destined to fail. One thing I love is to fail and look stupid. One thing you love is to watch people fail and look stupid. There's a whole bunch of studies you could look up to prove it. You should thank folks for being brave enough to do it. And I don't mean me in particular, but even at all. I'm not here for your boos or applause. I'm just here to write, 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 write. write. I don't even know how clocks work, y'all. It's gonna be okay. A broken clock is right twice a day. By this time tonight, I know the stupid jerk will be right, right? Welcome to the Museum of Dead Words, where my colleagues and I have spent the past four years identifying and cataloging words in the English language that have stopped working, died, failed us in our interminable quest for communication, acknowledgement, and empathy. I'm your tour guide, Dialect, and along with Pamela Capallet, Kristen Crouch, and Andrew J. Scoville, we were supposed to walk you through, walk with you through our findings and conclusions through visceral art, visceral heart and very good rhymes. We were going to the Bay. We were going to Birmingham, Colorado, plenty other places. But you know, since we're here, let's have a little museum moment and talk about the average life cycle of black slang. You can call it AAVE or Ebonics if you're 90s inclined like me in American discourse. And when I say American discourse, we mean when white society as a whole gets a hold of it. And just like uh, Jazz and Nokia, there are five steps. We'll use uh, as a control the word the bomb, the phrase. So the first step is blackness, darkness, scary. Excuse me, your son was called into the office today because he said that the food his mother makes is the bomb and we just wanted to make sure that there was no violence or abuse going on in the house. The second stage is when some spicy white person gets a hold of it. You know, that cool kid who thinks they got a little extra privileges. It's still scary, but it's accessible. It's badass scary because of skin tone. The third step, third stage is legit cool. One of those spicy whites probably turns out to be some sort of entertainer, singer, actor, influencer, cool person, and makes a hit. The word is then Columbus, and you can see the beginning of the degradation, which begins really in earnest with the fourth stage, teen mockery. That's when it goes from the bomb and the bomb to the bomb? Oh yeah, that's the bomb. It's so played out because of oh, it's overused and I'm so tired of hearing it and other forms of coded anti-blackness. When I was a kid in the 90s, they used to say only wiggers would say that. Please, my white friends, don't use or refrain from using the word wigger. It's a contraction, you know for what. The final step is cold commodification. And that's where commercials for toys and sitcom moms begin using the word. When the question of appropriation comes up, especially now that commerce has gotten in the way, refer to step three. It was made up by spicy white anyway. You've heard that when people talk about job language or jazz language or hip hop slang or Twitter slang or meme slang or stan language. That's just one of the ways that words die. And you can see not through the phrase the bomb, but also through Karen and woke and many other popular words today, how words are torn down and killed. In the future, the Museum of Dead Words is going to be an online experience starting September 7th and continuing for 11 weeks. We'll be exploring these words in ridiculous depth with help from amazing visual artists from all over the world. It's a free party every time. So please check out museumofdeadwords.com for the schedule and other details. As for the future of ensemble theater, first of all, it's asynchronous, which is gonna be better for all the ways that we process information anyway, but it's part of how art is more accessible now to consume and to produce. And a reminder that we are all artists and we are all making art all the time, using our imagination to paint a better world on a canvas or to start rumors about people that you hate or to find creative ways to hurt somebody without anyone noticing. We are all, always making art. The role of those of us who call ourselves artists, especially those of us who assemble ensembles, is to prove that art is best when the collaboration outweighs the competition, even when that statement sounds like a contradiction. Thanks, y'all.
one. Oh, I am so grateful and full of joy to have been able to witness just a picture, a ghost picture of what might have been in the past and what is happening now and what is to come. Uh, thank you all. These art shares are giving me life. And now you need to go get some life. We're going to encourage you to take a bio break. We're going to have a few of these throughout the programming. We're inviting you to go get some water, go take care of your body. We would like for all of our registered participants to join us. We are now going to be going into our anti-racist action circles. For our BIPOC attendants, you are invited to join us in the hop-in sessions. We'll be starting at 11 o'clock sharp. We know we said 10.50, but we want to give you a moment to take your bio break. 11 o'clock sharp, though, we're going to be starting in the BIPOC area in the sessions. And for our uh, white anti-racist allies, they will be working um, inside of a Zoom, and they have the address for that. There's a lot of communication going on in the hop into chat. Please have a good break. Rest and replenish your bodies. For our outside audience, um, we will be returning to the live streaming with our Strength Through Alliance and Culturally Specific Organizations at one o'clock. Thank you all.